Anthony, what's the best way to shoot a short form video that explains what hypnosis is, what it can do for clients, and what they should expect in the first session with me? My goal is to expand my one-to-one -one practice. What are your thoughts? Okay, so this is really a great question. Um, I think <clears throat> there's a lot to consider here. Uh, the first thing we got to do is take a step back. Um, I see this all the time with folks. So when you get hear the question, uh, what is hypnosis? Uh, a lot of times as hypnotists, it's easy to go, oh, here's an opportunity for me to demonstrate my expertise. Let me explain the technical components that make hypnosis work. Let me talk about common misconceptions ha folks have about hypnosis. And let's talk about the structure of the unconscious mind, right? And like, that's all cool to hypnotists a lot of times. Uh, but the reality is like that's not what that client needs to hear to move them one step closer to working with you. And that's where they can get the transformation. So to the extent our content isn't helping them move one step closer to working with you where the content isn't doing what it's supposed to. And that's because that's how you're going to expand your one-to-one -one practice and help them. You can't serve them if they don't show up, right? So uh, one of the things I want us to do is take a step back now uh, and we're going to put on our client hat. We're going to think from the client's perspective. If the client's asking you about hypnosis, what do they need to know to move one step closer to working with you? Probably that it's safe. Probably that you've helped people in the past with the same issue they have and probably that the result lasted. That's the type of information. You get the idea here, right? Not what makes hypnosis work. That's edifying the modality. I need your content to edify you being able to help them, right? And you could demonstrate this through results. There's a bunch of different ways. I'll talk specifically uh, about some of the ways that I approach content making. Uh, uh, and those of you that follow me on TikTok, you see this all the time. In fact, it's a really good exercise. I suggest just go back to 2020, 2021, 2022. Pick five videos, 10 videos, however much time you got. Um, pick three that look terrible, that don't work, that flop. Watch two that perform at a high level. And just observe like what I'm talking about in those videos. Uh, hooks, frame, all the different things that are going on, right? The headlines, stuff like that. Subject matter. And then go to the next year and do it. And you'll see an evolution, right? Because in the beginning, I talked a ton about hypnosis. All, I made those types of videos and clients just didn't care. You'll see a lot of videos, but not a lot of testimonials, right? It's kind of funny. Um, so those things matter to us, right? Uh, what makes hypnosis work? It's an easy mistake to make. Right? We think that's what's going to matter to the client. But really, it's almost like the hypnosis is the vehicle. They want to get to a destination, we may love the vehicle we're driving them, we're using to get them to the destination with, and we may want to talk about that. They care about the destination. Is this ride going to be safe? Right? Am I going to enjoy it? Right? Things like that. You get the idea. Once I'm there, can I stay there? Right? Um, so uh, very important to consider. And you know, you'll notice a shift recently in my TikTok content um, where I'm talking about hypnosis, but that's because I'm teaching hypnotherapists to create breakthroughs rapidly. By just by using that client's unconscious mind, understanding it, interpreting it, and what to do with it. Right? We're not using protocols and techniques, but that's because there's a change in my niche. Right? If you go down, you scroll a little bit, you'll see it's all smoking cessation. And so when you look at those types of videos, what I'm trying to do is create a frame of reference for that client that's different than their current problem orientation. So right now they know, like for instance, in my niche, they want to quit smoking. They go, I just want to quit smoking. Right? Um, and there's a bunch of different options on the market. I could get really scientific and explain to them success rates of those modalities, but boy, oh boy, I got to say that doesn't move the needle as much as you think it would. We know human beings aren't particularly rational actors, but then what do we do in our marketing, right? We, we appeal to the rational side of them. Some of that's helpful. Um, you can have some of that in there, but ultimately the things that move the needle the most for me is like asking questions. Like I might say something along the lines of, um, make a series of videos or something I might say like so um, you ever feel like when you go to quit smoking you just feel stuck there's just something underneath the surface that's keeping you stuck and you don't know what it is this is something folks can can orient to right they go oh yeah no it does kind of feel like that and so to what extent this uh, stuck feeling what do you think that is do you think that's primarily a chemical physical problem or primarily a mental issue something in the mind and <laughs> 
pretty quickly. They say, yeah, it's, I, think it's, I think it's primarily in the mind. Uh, what percentage would you say that's in the mind? 70, 80, 90% is what I usually hear, 95%. Some folks will say 100. Occasionally, you get someone that says it's 50, 50. Um, it doesn't really matter what they say, though, because we're taking them on a journey here. Uh, and they're, they're realizing the answers. We're not telling it to them because that's not, that's not as effective. Oh, okay, cool. So now let me ask you something. When you look at the solutions that are on the market out there, uh, how many of them would you say tackle the mental component of this? Or versus how many are really oriented around the physical component? Oh, I never really thought about that before, you know. Uh, so it's interesting because you're saying the majority of this problem is mental. Uh, uh, it's in the mind. To what extent, if we don't resolve that, do you think you're going to be permanently smoke-free? And now they're willing to like really think about this problem. But we've moved it. We've created a new reference frame from them. We didn't mention hypnosis once, right? But they have been going inward <laughs> the whole time, right, to kind of think about this problem differently. So we've changed their thinking. Now they're several steps closer to working with us. We've done this very quickly, right? Maybe there could be a video series. I do this a lot of times over lives um, with, an, with the right audience, that type of thing. Uh, so you could start to talk about the modality there, but I don't even really know that it's that necessary. A lot of times I just say, you know, I'm Benny Brigantz. Uh, that's what I help people do. I help them solve this problem. You know, and I just usually just go right to results, and I have a bunch of them, so it makes it very easy. But you can get an idea here of how we can quickly shift uh, the client's orientation to the problem. This is probably more important. Like, they need to understand it differently. And then all you have to be able to do is articulate a little bit about how you've helped people in the past get there, right? Get to the destination they want. And this is all to your advantage now. And so now you're demonstrating expertise in your area of being able to help a client solve a problem versus um, trying to create efficacy around a modality. This is a different thing. Right? Uh, so I hope this helps. Folks, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please comment below if you have more questions, you want to follow up, etc. Uh, everyone take care. Have a great day.